Julie Powell and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. This week I'm going to take you through how I created Alice in the Clouds um, with the model Jess Amy from a shoot I did uh, recently. So this is the final edited image and I'll take you back step by step through what we did all the way through. Started off with just a shot of basic clouds that I took and then I duplicated the layer and blurred it slowly just with a, a Gaussian blur. Um, I then added a photo filter, just a, a blue cooling filter just to, to blue it up a little bit. I then added some smoke along the bottom, added in a bit more added in a just with a paintbrush at a hundred percent just a soft white blob which I then set to screen mode and drop down to about fifty percent just to put some brightness into that area there um, I then brought in a shot of some rock um, that's the the whole shot there which is taken at the Yu Yangs and I just put in a layer mask and blocked all that area off so you've just got the rock and the sky behind. Um, I also did a brightness contrast just to brighten it up a little bit uh, as well as putting a blue photo filter on the rock so that it all sort of is in the same color area. Added a bit more smoke and or um, cloud haze through to the edge of the, of the rock and um, and brought that down. Now, then I brought in Jess and that's a shot that was taken in the studio so I just went through and masked all of her out so that I've just got her sitting on the rock and of course she looks like she's just sitting in mid-air here so I put in a bit of a shadow to anchor her down Um, and there's a bit more shadow there to anchor her. Um, I also put in some bushes which I um, they're just some trees that I cut out from another image uh, put a little bit of a shadow behind those just to make them look like they sit there um, this one was a bit too green so I put a hue saturation level on it and there's another branch with some leaves as well that I put in there. Um, now that one is actually just a, a really crappy JPEG that um, I couldn't be bothered trying to get rid of all the the white um, but I did like the image it just sort of added a bit of whimsy to it so switching that to multiply knocks out all the whites. Um, so I went through I added a brightness contrast um, without the mask so I made that quite bright and I clipped that up to the image um, and then what I did was inverted the layer mask so that I was only painting back in all the areas that I wanted um, so I made it bright then covered it with black and then went through and painted in the areas that I wanted um, and then of course I added a photo filter to that as well um, which is a blue just to, to give a cooling because she was a little bit too yellow um, then we did just a basic dodge and burn layer which is just a grey layer that I used a soft brush at about 10% painted in some blacks to accentuate the shadows um, and same again painted in the whites to accentuate the highlights and set that to overlay and then that gives you a dodge and burn so as you can see that quite dramatically changes where I wanted all the lights and shadow to come from because the lights obviously coming from here um, even when I shot it in the studio it was mostly coming from here but there was a bit of backlighting as well so I wanted to get rid of that just so it looked a bit more natural then I added this feather it's only a tiny little feather you can only barely just see it but it just gives it a little bit of whimsy 
Um, I then added a light flare. If I hop this out of the way. Um, which is just a brush that I use. Um, which is this one. So I just grab that. Um, go to a new layer. And uh, just paint it on. In white obviously. Grab it. Change it. Move it. Pop it wherever you want to put it. Um, this one I've actually set to soft light and 76%. So I'll just get rid of that one that I just did. Um, brought in a dove, um, which I got from Pixabay. Um, added a, uh, a drop shadow. And then added a key, which I got from Mischief Circus. Um, and that's also got a drop shadow on it. Um, I've also taken out a little bit of the key so that the dove's claws come through. Added in some fabric which was from um, War Exchange I think. And of course I set that through to screen so that it knocks out the black. Um, I then put some tiny little wings. Don't know if you can even see it. We'll just scan in a bit. I put some tiny little wings on the key as well. Um, there's also a cat. Um, he's not exactly the Cheshire cat, but it gave a little bit of whimsy to the whole piece anyway. So that was in there as well. Then I did a curves layer. So brought the darks down a little bit and dropped the white so that it wasn't quite so, so stark. And same with the shadows. I brought the shadows up so they weren't black black, but they were still fairly darkish. Um, then we did a hue saturation level where I, I brought everything down so it wasn't quite so colourful. Um, then added a colour fill of dark blue. Um, and what this does, if you set this to lighten, this will actually put blues into all the shadows. Just makes it sort of just a little bit hazy. Um, then a gradient fill, which was uh, a black and tan through to white, which I just ran up the image just to give it a, a little bit more depth through here and more light up here. Um, then I did a colour lookup table. Um, this one's just candlelight, which I did at, I dropped the opacity to 100% at, sorry, 50% at 100% it looks like this. Um, then I did another colour lookup, which was edgy amber, which looks like that. So I dropped that down to about 10%. And then the last one I did, which was late sunset, which I also dropped down to um, about just under 20%. Uh, I think it was 17 or 18%. And that just gives this lovely soft three-dimensional feel. Um, sort of a bit of a haziness through it and all the rest of it. Um, so then I just merged everything onto the new layer. I then, after I made a new layer, I then went into the blur gallery and went into field blue. Um, this allows you to work out how much of this you want it to have blurred when it opens. Okay, so this allows you to pick what the center of your image is going to be. So I'm obviously going to have it up around Alice. And this is how much of a blur you want. So I can have the whole image pretty blurry. And just the little bit in focus. Sorry, it's just a bit slow. And you can change the how much bokeh you want in the background. You can actually even change the color of it if you want to. Um, and you can play around with, with doing it that way um, so that you feel blue. So I'll just come back into here and cancel it. 
so that's pretty much what I got so it's all nice and blurry sort of around the edges here and then I decided that it was probably just a little bit too much so I um, put a layer mask on and deleted some of it out um, I then did a new layer and created a vignette so just going on to new blank layer taking the um, elliptical marquee tool and holding the space bar down you can control where you want to move it and lift it off and then that I had it set to a 250 mil uh, 250 pixel radius um, so that it's nice and, and soft graduation I'll just inverse it because I want to put the vignette around the outside edge not on the inside obviously and I just then did a curve and just darkened around the edges just slightly don't need to have it have it too much and then that is the finished product um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you next time bye for now